Have you heard the name of Dr. R. H. Richaria, eminent agricultural scientist of India, the unsung hero of Indian agriculture? He worked as the director of Central Rice Research Institute, Kotok, from 1959 to 1966. Situation was such that he was forced to retire untimely. He told that the Japonica varieties being imported from Japan might uh, spread the disease of Tungro virus and other diseases and that varieties were coming into India without planned quarantine. And he said that the Central Rice Research Institute is capable of, of selecting high limb varieties of rice. I mean, that doesn't require any chemical fertilizer, pesticides. And he selected different varieties. Unfortunately, he was the victim of science, politics and jealousy. So let us hear something about Dr. R.H. Richaria. A tribute to Dr. R.H. Richaria. Dr. Rathelal Horelal Richaria was born in 1909 in Nandanvara village in Seuni Malwa subdivision of Hoshangabad district in Madhya Pradesh. His father was a headmaster of the local school as well as the postmaster. From his childhood, Rathilal was an ardent gardener who used to do experiments with vegetables in small plots. He did his post-graduation MSc in Botany from Nagpur, unable to gather enough resources to go to Cambridge University for doctorate. Rathilal gave the exam for scholarship meant to send students for ICS. Indian Civil Service and managed to reach Professor P. S. Hudson at Cambridge University. Professor Hudson said, real PhD work is successful only if the research work is useful to the farmers. Returning home, in 1931, he was employed as an oil seed expert in Nagpur. Since 1942, he started working at Sabur Agriculture College and Research Institute in Bihar for 17 years. Between 1937 and 1950, Dr. Richeria also perfected the extraction of soft linen from flaxseed stalks as an oil seed specialist. Gandhiji expressed his satisfaction with the linen fiber work and asked Bihar Chorka Shangho to continue the work. In 1942, he started working on clonal propagation of rice, simply meaning vegetative propagation of rice. Here, one needs to transplant some seedlings in a phased manner, and the third transplanting is the final transplanting. Even 300 grams of seed is enough for transplanting an acre of land, thus saving seeds while increasing the yield. The entire operation needs to be completed within the normal schedule for transplanting in the region. Thus, seedlings needs to be processed at least 1.5 months in ad advance. Though it seems cumbersome, in the end it is profitable. Richeria had observed in an increased yield of 17 to 61 percent as compared to normally transplanted seedling. These seedlings also were more resilient to pests and diseases. This method uses much less seed and helps in maintaining the purity of the variety. In some cases, the rice also matures at least a week earlier. In 1962, Dr. Richard research on clonal propagation at CRRI Koto was published in the prestigious scientific journal Nature, Volume 194, May 12, and was further promoted by the International Rice Research Institute ED in 1963. Dr. Richeria observed that the tiller's seedlings, that is clones, could tolerate more water. Similar methods are utilized when the transplanted seedlings are destroyed by flash flood in Sundarbans. 40-day-old tiller's of 1.5 feet height are separated from each other and transplanted singly in deep water at a greater spacing of one feet, giving profuse tillers. Jealousy, favoritism, and science politics. The International Rice Research Institute, ED of the Philippines, was established principally with the, the joint financial initiative 
private philanthropist namely Rockefeller and Ford Foundation of United States. United States put pressure on the government of India to cooperate with the Rockefeller Foundation in establishing Giri in Philippines. CRRI Katok was asked to hand over all information and rice seeds to them. Dr. Richaria believed that the CRRI could be considered as the largest and best rice research center in the world and the institute was working on traditional rice as well as Japonica varieties. Dr. Richaria found that the Japonica varieties were susceptible to several diseases including Tungro virus, which was not known in India. He warned that if Japonica varieties entered the country in large quantities without planned quarantine, such diseases would spread to our indica rice varieties. Meanwhile, in March 1966, CRRI came under the aegis of Indian Council of Agricultural Research, New Delhi, and being the senior most scientist at the time, he was supposed to take over the post of Director General as per ICAR norms. But due to his opposition in large-scale introduction of Japonica strains in India, he was forced to retire prematurely in 1967. This opened the opportunity to Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, who favored the introduction of fertilizer-responsive dwarf varieties of wheat and rice in India. He was told to retire prematurely because of his opposition. Dr. Richaria filed a case in Orissa High Court against disorder, but he was severely harassed by disconnecting water and electricity to his official residence and he was forced to leave Bhopal where he handed over the charge to Dr. Padmanabhan. After winning the case, he returned to CRRI but found his official chamber locked and learned that all his research papers had been taken away by the authorities. In 1971, he joined Madhya Pradesh Rice Research Institute in Raipur as the director and he became the agricultural consultant to the government of Madhya Pradesh. As Dr. Shaminathan became the director general of ICR, he managed to send 16,000 rice varieties from ICR research centers across India as well as from state departments of agriculture and CRRI to IRI in the Philippines. A request from IRI to hand over all the traditional paddy varieties of Madhya Pradesh and had also come to Dr. Richaria, but he refused to part with them. He was not willing to hand over this rice wealth of India outside the country, though he agreed to give some of his rice lines that he bred for the benefit of the farmers. In 1976, World Bank provided the government of Madhya Pradesh a loan of 4 lakhs and urged the margin of Madhya Pradesh Rice Research Institute with Jawaharlal Krishi Vidyalaya in Jabalpur. This ended Dr. Richard Rias yet another attempt to popularize promising and high-yielding indigenous varieties. Between 1971-76, he collected 17,000 indigenous rice from different parts of erstwhile Madhya Pradesh. About 967 varieties were sent to 17 districts for trials with an average yield of 3.98 metric ton per hectare. 237 varieties of aromatic rice, coarse and fine varieties. Modern dwarf varieties were not suitable in 92% of the rice growing belt of Madhya Pradesh, where farmers practiced BSC or bushening system. Under this system, paddy seeds were shown at the onset of rains in the fields was ploughed across when the seedlings were five weeks old. Richaria identified 164 indigenous varieties with yield more than 4 metric ton per hectare. Some of the varieties had even higher yields. Dr. Richaria identified several noteworthy paddy varieties having retuning ability while he was at the Bihar Agriculture University at Sabur. Kaspichuri in Andhra Pradesh gave yield of 1 metric ton per hectare from a retun paddy two months after harvesting, while in Katak, 1962-1963, retun crop of Kichli Champa yielded 1.85 metric ton per hectare. 
He collected 44 cluster rice varieties like Chind Roti, Chind Dhan, Jhala Jhinde, Jhumka, Jhumeri, etc. These varieties can easily be hybridized with other rice. He also discovered 22 varieties of purple leafed rice containing cancer preventing anthocyanin like Ikkomuta, Dopana, etc. Such varieties can be used as a marker for easy identification from F1 to F2 stage during hybridization. Young purple leaves can be fried with gram flour and served as pakoda. During his travels in Bastar, he had noticed that how Adibasi communities showed mixed varieties and could identify male sterile lines for facilitating natural hybridization. In 1983, the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi asked Dr. Richaria to develop a plan to increase rice production where he had suggested the use of several promising indigenous varieties. Despite all odds, Dr. Richaria continued his quest and was developing a rice encyclopedia covering 2000 traditional rice of Madhya Pradesh till he finally rested in 1996 at the age of 87. He wanted to start working with 1,500 varieties and develop seeds to be distributed among farmers. It is unfortunate that our institutions and nation never recognize such an amazing scientist, but he remains alive. So let us remember Dr. R. H. Richeria once again.